if i haven't said it already happy new year i'm trying to make 2024 best year possible and with that i have taken time to set aside some advice for you a couple months ago i had asked you guys on a couple of my social medias to ask me some questions i have gathered them over the time i originally was going to put names and whatnot but for privacy purposes we're just going to put it at anonymous answering those questions now how do i manage anxiety if i'm being completely and utterly honest pretty anxious person in general at one point i was told that i had to take medication as i've mentioned in many of my videos i have a lot of health conditions so overlaying all of those medications on top of each other is really just not beneficial for me so with that being said i have found some coping mechanisms one of the reasons that i have so much anxiety is because i worry a lot i worry about everything i mean i worry about whether i'm gonna have a good day whether i'm gonna park correctly if i'm gonna feel good i have a lot of testing anxiety before when i was younger and i still kind of do this today when i get really really bad anxiety i tend to do this like this it got so bad to the point where i started getting these little marks on my hands and they're not there anymore i would i started cutting my nails down and so sometimes i would go like this but you wouldn't see it because i kind of have it like near my body and i would just start clenching you know now being an adult and of course you know it's inevitable i feel like you have two options either you deal with it or you take medication a way that i have coped with it i found that are really great are breathing or i try to focus on something else because i think a lot of the times when we're overthinking about something or we become very anxious we become very aware of the situation and then our thoughts just sort of travel and you start to overthink a lot breathing is a really great technique i know it's crazy to think like no i'm not going to do that but especially when you're in an atmosphere where you don't have a stress ball or you don't have somebody that you can talk to being in that state of mind in yourself is what really helps me so just kind of inhaling all the way to 10 and then exhaling till you get down to 10 is one way I realize this may not work for everybody if not try to think about something that makes you happy so that way you're straying away from what's going on especially when you're having a panic attack that's the worst because your body is already thinking like okay I'm having a panic attack okay I'm getting really sweaty okay I don't know what's gonna happen just distracting your mind is gonna be the best advice that I could give you finding the best coping mechanisms that are more suitable for your lifestyle is gonna be so extremely beneficial and then just practicing them so that way it just becomes a habit so that way instead of you thinking about the problem you've already come up with a solution how did you get into makeup so i actually really love this question i think i've always had a passion for makeup kind of like a way to distract myself i really got passionate about makeup when i was a little bit older i would practice a little bit mainly because i think i was getting invited to like quinceaneras and i was tired of people doing my makeup i was like no i want to do my own makeup as you guys know i did work for the brand mac straight out of high school and that was like on my bucket list probably one of our first brands that we ever went to this was like a very pivotal moment in my life and very significant it kind of formed my love for the brand and whatnot I went to high school in that peak period where makeup was really trending like 2014 to like 2017 Morphe was thriving James Charles you know the era I'm talking about I just kind of fell in the bandwagon of wanting to do my own makeup you know what we've grown so much as a makeup artist and to this day I love what I do I think the more that I started to step out of my comfort zone and kind of just start doing my own makeup and then when I started working for the brand I just started to realize that I loved creating makeup videos as well and this was very much an aspiration um ironically enough I've actually been doing since i was 11 but over the years i've taken down videos and i've changed things i want to get better so she said do you enjoy social media i want to start pushing my own youtube channel but i'm insecure it's more of your mindset of just being like look it's the internet you know what i'm saying you do what you want and i think it was also the mindset of you have to be so strong and you have to have such thick skin not to give a poo about what other people think speaking for myself this is a really difficult thing to do because i care a lot about what people think about me like if somebody says they don't like me and i don't even know them i will try to figure out a way for them to like me like i don't know what it is i've been like this for a while and i think i've just come to an age where i've learned that really if it's not affecting me obviously it's gonna affect you mentally i hate to say it but and most of the time the people that dislike whatever you're doing or try to make you feel insecure it's because most of the time the people that are gonna poop on you and what you want to do especially you starting your own youtube channel people are still going to talk about you whether you do this or not just know that there's always going to be somebody out there that's not cheering you on the way that you go about it is telling yourself is is it going to make you happy now the way that i handle like mean comments and i started to filter out words and people get smart and there are times where i delete things or i just automatically have it deleted because sometimes i think the worst thing that somebody can tell you online and it being like somebody that you don't even know is pointing out your insecurity that only you know about like that is the worst thing because then you become self-conscious of it the reality of it is it's really gonna fall on you and how strong you have about your self-love somebody has told me or they've made comments like about my weight um i get people that comment about my weight gain all the time obviously they don't actually know me on a daily basis but even then like 
it hurts, I won't mind. How I go about it is I tend to tell myself that they are just a person behind the screen. They don't know me and even if they do, they are just somebody trying to weigh me down. I'm happy. I love what I'm doing. It excites me. I love to do what I do and that's all that matters. Their comments are nothing but words, but I do understand that words can be hurtful. It's more of just ignoring it. Let it go through one ear and out the other. Have you ever felt lost like you don't know what to do? All the time. All the time. And I say this with the intent that it's okay not to know what you want to do because honestly most of us don't know what we want to do. I think it's a matter of you want to find yourself so start setting boundaries, start putting restrictions, keep your mind at ease but keep it busy. The reason why I say set boundaries is because a lot of times we're easily influenced by others around us. See when I started applying to colleges I thought that I wanted to go to a four-year. I thought that that's what I wanted to do and I ended up going to community college but because everybody else, all of my other friends were you know getting accepted into like four years, they were getting accepted into private, I thought that that's what I had to do too. And I think it's more of a bandwagon. So disassociating yourself with people who try to convince you to do things that maybe aren't right on your path. See, I originally went into college wanting to be biomedical. The majority of what I knew that people were doing, biomedical, engineering, and my first year of college, I was doing that. And I sat there and I thought, who am I doing this for? Myself or somebody else? Because quite frankly, I'm not happy. You want to find what you want to do. In those moments where you feel lost, that's the time where you have to take to dedicate to figuring out what is it that you want to accomplish? What is it that you want to do with your life? Because whatever that may be, listening to another individual is not going to be it. It's fine if they're giving you advice, but if they're trying to tell you something like, oh, you got to do this without so you can make more money. But is that what you want to do? Is that what you generally feel like in your heart deep down is something that you could see yourself doing for the rest of your life? No, then keep searching. Even if you're at a point in your life where you feel like you chose the wrong occupation, I think we're living in a society where anything is possible. It's just a matter of going out there and doing it. It goes with saying just because something works out for somebody else doesn't mean that it's going to work out for you. I loved science and math and I thought that becoming a neurosurgeon was going to be my occupation and I began to realize that as I was sitting there in my first biology class I don't want to do this and not see myself pursuing it and you know what that's just the reality of it and that's okay. So if you're feeling lost in this moment take this year to finding out what you love to do. Experience new things. Try new things. Maybe you want to be a chef. Maybe you need to you know figure out some things. Maybe you want to you know travel, study abroad, whatever that may be. If you're not happy in a certain point in your life change it. I know it's easier said than done but we really do have the words and the mindset to control our future. You just gotta jump. With me I always have the door open. I have half of my body outside into the future trying to take a peek at what my future could look like and the rest of my body chilling inside because I know that it's safe. I'm safe in my little box. But sometimes we gotta step out that comfort zone. Do what people say about you affect your thoughts on yourself all the time? I think I've been doing social media long enough to know that not everybody is gonna like me. And even if I get a nasty comment or a nasty remark, they're just people behind a screen. Yes, I know we can't control what people say, but we sure as hell can't control what they think about us too. And I know it sucks, but you know, I grew up with so much problems just in school school and with a lot of other people because I was a very nasty person because of the experiences that I had in my life. Now is that okay? No. But being on the other side and you know kind of getting picked on again, it sucks. It does. I won't lie and I'm not going to sugarcoat it because the last thing you want is somebody random behind a screen with a profile picture of just a letter telling you you're ugly. Okay and what? I don't care. Show your face. <laughs> no but it really does affect me because sometimes people will say things and I'll wake up and I'll sit there and I think you know what maybe I should quit doing this maybe I should stop doing this but for what to give them the satisfaction I realize that people are going to say whatever they want whether it be on social media or in person people have the right and entitlement they don't have to like you they don't have to respect you and that goes with saying that everybody in your life if there's somebody that doesn't like you it doesn't even have to be online it could honestly be somebody that just is behind a screen a random person you probably you never had a conversation with maybe it's an acquaintance of another acquaintance of a friend because you're associated with them they don't like you either for no reason like it's like what tom was it tom holland said if you have a problem with me text me and if you don't have my number you don't know me well enough to have a problem with me that is so freaking true because there are so many people to this day that are beefing with me and i'm like what let me just make it clear i'm not beefing with anybody i've come to an immense to find my own closure like if somebody doesn't like me out there in the world i don't know what to tell them live your life i don't know i'm living my life so just live yours if the people that say 
made these comments about me, they're wanting a reaction out of me and it won't work. You can say whatever you want. You could be spiteful. I mean, I would have to have the energy and the time to even look. I'm a busy girl. The best way to go about the effect on yourself is going to go again with your self-esteem. Create a strong shield. Remember that you are a bad Remember that you are doing what you want to do. You're happy in your life. You're already five steps ahead of them. They're probably somebody behind the screen just hating on you just because they want to. Or maybe they're just doing it for kicks. I don't know. But personally, me, if you're happy in your life, then guess what? You're already winning. I really didn't want to answer this one. I am going to answer it. Have you ever had your heart broken? And the answer to that is yes, of course I have. I'm 22. What do you think? <laughs> I know some people haven't. A lot of my heartbreak comes from friendships that I've had in the past. And this is just because I love people way too much. I've had three, four friendships that have broken my heart within the last few years. And I think it sucks even more because it's like you want somebody to be you know you want somebody to be in your life so it sucks when they're not and you just kind of sit there and you contemplate like i'm the bad person most of the friendships that i that i'm still heartbroken over i have not made amends i've apologized to people but the people that i've apologized to aren't people that want to re like i don't want to rebuild a friendship with them it's people that i no longer talk to that i have no contact with it's it's really out of my control i can't force somebody to talk hello <laughs> I can't force somebody to want to talk to me. They have to do it on their own. But there have been a lot of friendships that have broken my heart. It sucks, you know, because you care about people. Like, I care a lot about a lot of people in my life. So, you know, knowing that I couldn't keep them kind of sucks. And I hope somewhere in the future they can forgive me. And, you know, we can make amends and either pick up from where we left off or, you know, make new memories. I'm a really loving person, but once I turn like cold on you, just know like I won't talk to you. Does wearing makeup all the time make you does wearing makeup all the time make you insecure to not want to leave the house without it? Sorry, babe, I didn't know what you mean by that. <laughs> I felt like Adele. <laughs> okay, but I get what you're saying. No, the reason why I'm going to say no to this is because I personally feel over the time being, and even with like a lot of like my acne, my cystic acne, I have just gotten used to it. I think sometimes letting my skin breathe, well, especially working at MAC, I think the environment, you know, you're always having to wear a full face. And even when it's like natural, it's never natural, babe. I did depend on it at one point and I did feel really ugly without it as I left the company. Company, I started to realize like even like in 102 degree like I wanted to wear makeup and then shortly after when I noticed that my skin was doing really bad and I had to give it a rest and I would go to the doctors and they would tell me like you have to give your skin a rest I had no choice so at that point I just kind of learned to love myself in that sense but I don't depend on makeup most days where I don't record I'm not wearing makeup like when I go to work I'm not wearing makeup mainly because I think that I've just loved my skin even with my scarring like I love it I love my dark circles I love my acne. I love my puffy eyes. Like, I love me as me. And again, it really goes with the whole self confidence tactic of like, you just have to love yourself. I'm not going to say that there are days where I don't like, I'm like, I don't want to go out. If I have like a really good, juicy pimple on my face, I will not go out. I'm not wearing makeup. I'm just not going out until it's gone. No, but I don't. I don't depend on it and it doesn't make me insecure when I don't wear it. Best advice to give to somebody who struggles with a low self esteem practice the self love. I'm probably going to mention this more in a different podcast which i'm going to take this as a great opportunity to check out my podcast at a mad life podcast i always leave it down below this is my podcast where i talk about living through my 20s while sharing personal experiences and advice via through me so if you're interested go ahead and check that out but anyway bouncing back to that question um it really goes with self-confidence and what i mean to say by practicing is practice allowing yourself to do things for yourself initially start practicing you know loving yourself for the way that you are tell yourself good things when you know when you wake up in the morning you look at yourself be like i am beautiful this could also go with you know drinking water eating every day that is really important because when you feel good you look good i promise every time that i've taken care of myself and i do multiple things in a day i mean it doesn't even matter if my hair is messy greasy if i'm on like day five of not washing my hair i smell <laughs> I feel amazing. I will feel on top of the world. Another way is practicing comments, telling yourself that you look beautiful, taking care of yourself. This could be, you know, maybe, maybe to you, you like getting dressed up. Take pictures of yourself, feel 
conceited. I don't care. Some people would be like, that could never be me. Okay, babe, so it could never be you. But you know what? In this moment, I'm really feeling pretty cute and I want to appreciate it. Of course, to an extent, I think there's a difference between feeling beautiful and being really cocky. Like, like I think of one time where I told this girl randomly, I was out, you know, I live in LA. So like, there's always like influencers. If you're going down to the right places in LA, I think people are under this impression. Like if you go to Hollywood, you're like running into people, which you will, but not as much as you think you would. But in that sense, and I complimented this girl on her jacket and she was taking photos and I just kind of like, you know, really quick, I was like, hey, I was like, you look great. I was like, I love your jacket. And she was like, I know. Oh, ooh. I take that back. That's what I mean by cocky. I think it's okay if like someone tells me like, thank you. You know, with me, when somebody compliments me in public, I get really like awkward. I'm just kind of like, thanks. <laughs> like, I don't know. Anytime somebody has complimented me, like I've gotten compliments on like my outfits or like my eyeshadow and I'm like, <laughs> So words are going to be huge. You need to tell yourself the nice things. Owe it to yourself. Say nice things to yourself. Take care of yourself. Write down things that you love about yourself. Taking that time to love yourself. Take photos. I mean, at least for me with somebody that's always had a low self-esteem and stop comparing yourself. Stop it. I know for myself, I've always done this and I've always struggled with a low self-esteem, but I think I'm at a point where I'm starting to transition out of it and I'm kind of at a normal where sometimes I'll pick up myself, but I feel pretty beautiful. Now, moving on to my 10 pieces of advice for you. Move silently. Now, what I mean by this is don't tell anybody what you're doing. Don't explain it. Don't even talk about it. I promise you, not everybody's going to be on your side. And I really mean to say that because I used to want to share every good thing. Even now, sometimes I want to share things, but I've learned that I probably only have like a few particular people that I can tell to even then sometimes I have to keep things a little hush hush until they actually happen the more that you want to share and open up about things the less likely it could happen and you could honestly be jeopardizing what good things could be coming in your future I have learned not to open my mouth I've actually lost a job opportunity because I opened my mouth it ended up being that me and the girl ended up going for the same position I was telling her all of these great things about the job and how the recruiter really liked me and she ended up applying for the same position and guess who got the job? Not me. So just keeping that in mind, knowing that not everybody wants you to do well. So just always keeping quiet with your plans, what you want to do, even when it comes to your successes. Always let your success speak for itself. It's you versus you, babe. There is no you versus somebody else. Stop comparing yourself into somebody that is not even in the same atmosphere as you. Now, what I mean to say by that is a lot of the times we jump to conclusions by looking at other people on social media, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and we'll use that as leverage. People that like I would compare my life to that I don't even know I'm talking about girls that are well known and I would be like I want to be like that I wish I looked like that I had to look like this and the truth of the matter was I was so easily influenced by my own brain of what I was telling myself I'm in competition with them I have to be better than them our mind likes to play like trick games on us a lot of the time too what I've realized is we will use that comparison to get mad at another individual and make it a competition because we won't take accountability for our own failures so that's when we kind of will compare each other I used to do this all the freaking time like I I would get so mad because something didn't work out for me and it worked out for somebody else that I would get mad at them. But the reality of it was it was never their fault. It was mine because I'm not doing anything with my life to be at that point. It's about pushing yourself not about comparing yourself to the other person because you could spend all day comparing yourself and your successes but you won't ever get there until you do something you're too distracted in your mind comparing yourself so remember that it's always going to be you versus you it's never you versus anybody else health comes first my lucky three i know i mentioned in my previous podcast how i did not take care of myself and it really jeopardized my health i know we get caught up with school and work and just our everyday life but our bodies don't function unless we take care of each other this is going to be a reminder if you know that there's something wrong or you've been feeling a pain or you're just not feeling your best please make an appointment go to the doctors go to the dentist take care of yourself i mean over time if you don't take care of it it, it can progressively get worse and you obviously don't want that you know we don't want things to get worse we want them to get better start taking care of yourself make sure you're eating make sure you're drinking water staying hydrated make sure you're getting your eight hours of sleep it always makes a difference i promise you that even if you had a really crappy day the day before it always makes a difference i promise you that and of course that goes with you know taking your daily vitamins i know that seems really stupid i'm pretty big well i try to get on my dad about that because he forgets to and so i'm kind of like second mom of the oldest so i'm always like did you make sure everyone's taking their medications their medicines he's pretty good about it but still gotta stay on top of pops 
Don't isolate yourself. Oh my goodness. If I could just put this in caps, I would. Don't isolate yourself. Now, I know there are times where we have our low days. Believe me, babe, I've been there, done that. And even to this day, I still struggle with them. But do not isolate yourself. Do not to not, do not get caught up in the feels. Do not get caught up in your emotions. Don't let your emotions get the best of you either. Be around people. This is something that I did not do last year at all. I just hit an all-time low at the beginning of the year. Biggest mistake ever. I mean, after I hit that low, I was just like the rest of the year I just kept going like this and then I realized okay we got to get up from here we can't keep going down I am somebody that personally my social battery dies within like five minutes of being out and I have to be home last year I isolated myself so much that it was just work school home work school and I saw the same people I did the same thing and I want to change that up this year because I think I need to start going out there and stop letting my anxiety get the best of me like I'm such a worry where I will worry about every single thing so make it a point to go out once a day, whether that be on a walk, catch up with friends, get some frozen yogurt, catch a movie, go out and just enjoy the day, go out and enjoy the evening. Whatever that may be, wherever you live, do something with somebody else so that way you're not by yourself. Don't cook yourself up in the house. I think after COVID, it just kind of made me realize that I actually really like being inside. It's not healthy for you. Try to go out and meet new people, do new things, experience new things, whatever that may be. Just make it a point to go out and get some sun every single day. Even if you're a pretty busy person like myself, like I am somebody that am, I'm like always busy. Um, busy with either content, school, work, or just something else. It's going to take a small part of your day, but it's going to make the biggest difference in the long run. I always forget not to do it with my lashes on, but it's fine. Fix spray makes me so nostalgic now that I've left MAC because every time like I spray it, I just think I'm like, I don't know, it's like Disney when you get like your thick, like what a fix it is when you get to spray somebody. Stop texting me. Every time somebody texts me, I'm like, stop texting me. Unless you're somebody that I have pinned, then I'm like, hi. Imagine if I had nails though. Create three goals or a mini goal every single day so that way you can work towards it. Now, I felt like for myself, because I was so much in my head, I could not figure out what I wanted to do. I just know that I had a big goal and I wanted to accomplish it, but I wasn't even practicing it. I think with consistency, the key ingredient is practicing it and then making it a habit. Doing something every day, whether that be a small goal or a big goal, is going to help you towards that finish line. You know, this is also going to help with consistency. So let's say you wake up and your goal for that day is to work out for 30 minutes. Cool. At some point of the day, make sure that you work out for 30 minutes. And it could be a different goal every day till you reach your big goal. You know, whether that be like running two miles within a year. I don't know. Creating your goals is going to really help. Little goals lead to big goals, which leads to success rates. Form healthy habits. Now, this can go with either exercising, sleeping, eating three meals a day, whatever that may be, staying hydrated. Form healthy habits. This could be a rest day. I know a lot of the times when we're quick on our feet and we're doing everything, we feel like every single time, every hour, every minute of the day, we have to take time to doing something. You don't always need to do something, truly. I mean, you need to take a rest day. This is something that I'm going to incorporate in my year because last year I felt like I was always doing something every single day and I never had a rest day. Even on my days where I was resting it wasn't a rest day it was like I would work and on the days that I wasn't working I was at school so it was like there was no balance so of course finding a day or some time of an in, in, in your busy schedule to just resting and I mean this could just be watching a show relaxing giving yourself a mental and physical break so that way you're not feeling overstimulated you don't feel overwhelmed and then you feel like you're going crazy be dedicating some self-care time for yourself so this could be like a little self-care night towards the end of your you know busy day maybe this is dedicating some more time to your nighttime routine or your morning routine you know this could be waking up early and then taking care of your skin or you know doing a little bit extra in your shower routine maybe you give yourself two hours to just take a technology break and make yourself some tea and watch a show or read a book or journal whatever that may be do that so just incorporating those healthy habits for yourself i know when i say healthy habits some of you may be thinking like what oh, needs to exercise and eat i'm not a doctor okay doctor yeah. no i'm not a doctor so i'm not gonna tell you to do that just form healthy habits for yourself things that make you happy to lead you onto the right path of that healthy lifestyle detach and distance i love this one because quite frankly i'm somebody that is always frazzled i probably said that all the time i'm busy i have a million and one things going on so i don't always have time to fix my room a lot of the times when i've tried to explain it to my friends at least one of my really good best friends my best friend she knows this right off the bat whenever i'm cleaning it's not because my room is a mess it's well sometimes it is a mess actually my room is a reflection of my mind there's times where i would need to take a break or like a mental break and i just start cleaning and sometimes it's just my mind telling me that the mess because i just don't have control of the situation organize your room 
your car, your phone, your apps, your social media. That's what I mean when I say detach. So detach yourself from those unhealthy habits and those habits of wanting to just do whatever, throw everything on your bed, maybe stay unorganized. Try to maintain at least a somewhat organized. Now, when I say distance, what I mean to say by this is I mean distance yourself from habits, from people, from things in your world, in your atmosphere that serve you no purpose. And I know this is easier said than done because obviously even now in the state that I'm in, it's hard because there are certain people that I want to keep in my life, but then I think about it and I think, well, they serve no purpose and there's no obligation for them to stay. So I think I'll just start detaching. And a lot of the times we realize that people that are around us that could possibly be draining us is such a negative influence on us. And of course, if we have control of it in that moment, it's sometimes you just need that distance because it helps you see things more clearly. I think there's been a lot of moments where I've made friends or I've had somebody in my life and I think they're a positive thing on my life. But the thing is, they drain me more than anything and they're benefiting from it than I am. So learning to detach yourself, even habits. Like I have so many unhealthy habits. Like I used to just fall asleep. I would wake up at 10, especially in the moments where I wasn't working as much. Waking up at 10 is not realistic, especially for somebody that's trying to get back on the right path because it also affected my nighttime schedule and then I would get tired. As well as that, I struggled with wanting to eat three meals a day. I had developed an eating disorder and I stopped eating in the mornings and then I just stopped eating overall. And if I did eat, it would be like one meal a day or one meal every other day, which is very unhealthy for you. And somebody with health conditions, you don't want to be doing that. That's just the road that you don't want to take. Just distancing yourself from those habits, those people's environments, just cut them out. Caution with words. I cannot express this enough. I think with this, it's really going to go with saying that sometimes we say things and we put it on the universe and we don't realize that what we say, whether it's negative or positive, will always come back. See, there were times where I would be like, I hate today. Today's going to be a bad day. And sure enough, it was. It was like a chain reaction. It was like one thing bad happened, something else bad happened. I woke up late and then like I hit a rock or I hit a pothole and then I had to check my car and then I realized I was on E and then, you know, somebody called out. Like it was just like a boom, boom, boom chain reaction versus when I came in with the mindset of like, when I was in school, like recently when I shifted it, I was like, oh, I'm going to pass. I'm going to get an A on this exam. And I sure enough did. I'm going to get an A at the end of this semester. I'm going to have a great day. I did. Not saying that there weren't times where I would say that and certain things in my life would happen. You know, life happens. You know, we don't have control of that. But we do have control with the words that we say. Just be mindful of that, babes. You know, I know we want to be spiteful and we want to say these things because sometimes we feel that they're true in the moment. Say the most positive things possible because everything that you say will come back like a boomerang evolve now i cannot express this enough this is a brand new year it's a brand new month it's a brand new day every day that you wake up this honestly can be perceived as any kind of way but what i mean by this is start allowing yourself to grow from certain obstacles in your life so certain things that have happened in your past let it go and allow yourself to start in the healing stage so that way you can grow and it's and just be inspired to be the person that you want to be i think it's really hard to say and of course it's easier said than done because you don't always want to allow yourself to do that and of course it does require you to step out of your comfort zone but do that for yourself at the end of the day we need to allow ourselves to grow so that we, we don't stay in the same stage in the same chapter close that chapter and move on to a new one I think for myself i tend to restrain myself from letting myself evolve because i don't want things to change i get comfortable with it but getting uncomfortable is going to be the best way and i think as a young lady that i am today i have definitely let myself evolve much much more than i would have with my past self and i see myself every day changing into the person that i want to become and it's amazing because i would have never thought you know had i told myself last year or the year before like this is who you're going to become this is what the direction that you're going in i probably would have laughed to you and been like yeah right do you see the current situation i'm in i'm never gonna you know leave this place i'm never gonna get out of this but i did let yourself evolve this year whatever that means to you change as a person change into something that you want change into the individual that you are aspiring to become every day is a reset button I cannot agree with this enough. Every day is a reset button. I hate that growing up when we had like the new year, it was always like, what's your new year's resolution? You know, and this goes with my other point of find a goal every day. I honestly and truly think that we get so caught up in our feelings and our heads so much that we don't see that the atmosphere around us, every day that we wake up, every month, every year, it's a it's a new day, not just the year. Growing up, I always saw January 1st as like the real reset button and maybe that is because the date changes, but I started to realize as I got older, like I wanted to start new goals like i would be like i'm gonna start next week i'm gonna start you know tomorrow i think this is so incredibly important because we don't realize it in the moment but when we tell ourselves like we're gonna start something new it kind of resets our mindset you can restart at any point so let's say you have a goal and you're really consistent for like the first month or the first week and then you stop and then you feel like well i'm gonna wait well it's it's february i'm gonna wait till next year to get it done no get it done either next week or tomorrow stop postponing it every day is a reset day if you had a bad day if you had a bad start to whatever goal that you might have do it the next day every day is a reset day i truly 
truly mean that. I actually mentioned this in my previous podcast about how I, I really realistically had started my New Year's in December and I treated that as a trial run period. So I actually started doing what I wanted to do in December. So I've been walking every single day, eating three meals a day, taking care of myself and it has made a huge difference in my life. I have been pushing myself and today I actually walked three miles. Goal every day is to walk three miles. I started off at like 0.5 miles and then I, I slowly started to work up to one and then 1.5 and then two, 2.5 and today I finally hit three. Now mind you, the only reason why I've done this, you know, take your time with this, is because I've been slowly working my way up. I think a lot of the times we just want to jump to our goal by being like, I'm going to hit it by tomorrow and we need that time to show progress. That way we don't burn ourselves out for that matter. I realize that sometimes when we have a goal, it's really easy just to give up because it's always easier said than done and then when we start doing it, it becomes too real and then it's like, well, it's easier just to go back to my old habits, which is true. You can't. But at the end of the day, is that something that you want to sit with or do you want to actually pursue and accomplish that goal? Because let me tell you, it is so rewarding being able to wake up every day and push myself i hate walking i hate being active and i've realized that it's all about the lifestyle balance and it's still hard because there are days where i do retract and just because you give up easily just because you're not seeing progress doesn't mean that you should give up and even if you want to give up because you felt like you were being consistent again every day every month every week is a new day so every day is a reset button that would be my top 10 tips for you guys only my best advice to you guys buy it as you would i'm wishing every each and one of you guys best year possible i'm hoping that this year brings the best blessings and the best happiness for each and one of you. I'm hoping that you step out of your comfort zone, you move past the obstacles, you evolve, you grow as an individual, and just know you're never alone. I love you all and I'm wishing you the best and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I will see you guys next time and don't forget to subscribe of course. If you haven't checked it out, check out my first video. But yes, subscribe and let me know how your new year is going. I will see you guys next time. Bye!